this is where things get out of hand. What's going on everyone? We're back on the bench with the Bomber 2020 refresh version. I've got the savvy version here. And in the last couple of episodes, you've seen me do some basic upgrades as far as links and suspension and a new high altitude performance rear back half, which is a combination of carbon fiber and aluminum parts that reconfigure the rear end of the Bomber to give it more suspension travel, integrate a sway bar and a few other suspension geometry adjustments. But today we're looking at a much more over the top change. And that is that we're going to install the high altitude performance, low CG skid plate and transmission setup. This is going to completely replace the transmission and motor setup that sits inside of the bomber currently. Now, if you've not looked inside of your bomber, we're going to here shortly, but we're going to take out the transmission that sits in there now with the motor placed quite high. And instead we're going to replace it with this unit here. Now the main benefit of this is the low and forward motor position. That's something that we try to accomplish on a lot of vehicles. Now it's something you can see very evident in the Vanquish VS410 with the VFD transmission, very low, very forward motor. Again, we're accomplishing a very similar type setup here. Now this transmission is not just a standard three gear axial style transmission, although it does use a number of the same part. However, this piece again is a combination of 3D printed and carbon fiber plates. It does have carbon fiber plates on each side of the transmission to try and give it some rigidity to the case where you're going to see a lot of stresses. But the actual transmission case itself is a 3D printed piece. Now the transmission case and the skid plate are both printed through Shapeway. So they're an SLS printed nylon rather than like an FDM printed that you, you know, normal desktop type printer setups. The transmission is kind of a reconfigured three gear transmission. So things are moved around a little bit just for optimum placement of this forward motor mount setup. Now this is two pieces of carbon fiber spaced out with three millimeter spacers. And that allows us to flip the motor around and put it in the front side here. Now you can see the skid plate on the bottom has an extension that's made out of carbon fiber as well to help give us some protection from that motor once it's installed. This is just a very cool piece. It does completely replace the skid plate that sits in the bomber with this 3D printed version also. And it's got some adjusted link mounting locations. So we're going to see that we're gonna have to play around with link lengths specifically in the uppers to make sure that everything fits well. So even though in the very first upgrade video I changed out some of the links, we're gonna be changing those again. But I think that the first upgrades that we did on this were something that appealed to more of the masses. This is for somebody who's really looking to go over the top. So replacing some links with some longer versions, probably not outside of your wheelhouse if you're interested in going a route like this. Now, another big item that we haven't talked about yet is the big brushless motor that I've got hanging off the front of this transmission. That is a Tekken Rock 412 HD. So it's the 550 can length. And this is a 3100 kV motor. It's going to give this truck a lot of power. It's a five millimeter shaft, so we did need to make sure that we picked up a pinion with the proper five millimeter through bore to attach. Our stock pinion is not going to work. If you do decide to pick up a skid plate and LCG transmission setup like I've got here, you do need to pick up a number of other parts as well. You'll need a bearing kit for the transmission. You'll also need a top shaft and spur gear mount. I'm using the incision slipper eliminator kit. Then you'll of course need a three gear transmission set. Again, I'm using the incision set. You'll need an idler gear pin, which is something that's kind of easy to overlook. There's a Vanquish version for that. And finally, I'm using an incision Wraith style transmission output set. The Wraith style outputs extend that rear output further, making sure that your drive lines are going to reach appropriately. I will have a full list of all of the components that I'm using for this setup in this build in the description below, of course, so you can go through and find everything exactly how I'm doing it. Just because of how this transmission orients the motor and all of that, that is why I've got the motor installed already in this vehicle. The rest of the electronics will cover in a following episode, but I wanted to show you guys the orientation and location of the motor as far as how important it is to how much of the characteristics of this vehicle it's going to change. So I feel like it was definitely the time to show you that new brushless motor that we're going to install. But at this point, it's time to strip down this bomber once again 
take out the old heart from this and transplant in the new one. Now, here is why we're doing this mod. Here is the old transmission. You can see how high the motor is up there. Huge difference between the bottom of the skid plate and the center of mass of the motor. Definitely something that's going to raise you up quite a bit, especially when you start putting in a heavier brushless motor like we have here. Now, instead, with the new less center of gravity version, once you get those skid plates on the same plane, you just have this massive difference in center of gravity going to be much more efficient. And we've got a much more compact transmission in general. So we just have a whole package here that is much more simplified than the original. Now the original is a very strong transmission though. There's just not a lot that you will need to do to this transmission. So if you want to stay with a stock transmission, the bomber one basically out of the box is pretty solid. You don't really have to worry about anything in it. This is purely for the performance end of why we're going after, not necessarily a huge difference in strength. So just something to keep in mind. So now we've got some more work to do, taking and mocking this transmission up in the chassis and then trying to figure out exactly what modifications we need to make for links. And it's installed. That is not that difficult of an installation at all. Everything goes in smoothly. And now you can see already, this motor sits so far forward and all the way at the bottom. There's nothing up high anymore. The previous transmission before, while it's a stout system, it's just not optimal for performance overall, just with the much higher motor location and the fact that it's more rearward to this assembly rather than what we've got here. This assembly takes that heavy motor option, puts it all the way to the front. Now this skid plate and transmission setup also has a tray alongside that's actually on this passenger side of the uh, skid plate. Now that can be used for a small battery in case you wanna use something that keeps your center of gravity nice and low all the time. Or with this setup, you can still utilize that front mounted battery setup. Now another thing to know is that this skid plate takes and pushes the trailing arms all the way out to the edge and angles the mount. So one thing that I noted in the last video was my shock angle. One thing I've done now is taking the trailing arms and space them to the outside of these link mounts. With that now, it corrects my rear shock angle so they're more up and down, which is going to work out perfectly. Now, as I mentioned, the installation of this skid plate is pretty straightforward. However, it did take a couple of things. One is that I had to take and get longer rear upper links. Now, the links that I used are 130 millimeters and have a very slight bend in them. But with that, I'm also using a Jado rod end on one side. So technically, a slightly longer link would be better. That way I could use a standard rod end might be something that I still investigate. These were just the size that I found initially that from the links that I already had laying around. So those are the ones I used. Now the stock links that go in the rear are 127 millimeters. So I'm only about three millimeters longer on the actual link side plus that longer rod end. So technically you could still use the stock rear links and then just use longer rod ends on them. And there's multiple link mounting positions on this skid plate. So you could really mess around and you could probably keep the factory rear links and just use longer rod ends. Then going up to the front, again, I needed longer upper links. What I did for that is I took the links that I took off of the rear and moved them to the front just like that. And those were a simple bolt-in installation. Now, if you wanted to pick this setup up, you could use the links that you had in the rear previously, install a longer rod end and probably be fine. And also you can buy the incision Yeti upper rear links, which is what would be used on here. And you can install those in the front. So you can basically just buy some off the shelf links and bolt them in here and you'll get away just fine with it. And I'll link to those Yeti upper links in the description below, you can check those out. Also on the Vanquish website, you can get a two pack of Jado rod ends in case you don't wanna buy a full pack. So I'll link to those as well. That way you could basically just buy parts and just bolt everything together, super easy. This is a pretty in-depth parts list because there's a lot there. Honestly, everything went together pretty well. And with how much it's going to change the dynamics of this vehicle, it's something that I 
I'm really happy that I did. And I think that you'd be happy if you wanted to invest in something like this also. At this point now, this suspension is feeling great. My pinion angles stay in check throughout the entire suspension travel. The ProLine's ProSpec shocks feel amazing. I'm getting a ton of travel, both front and rear, everything nice and smooth. I'm super excited to run this. One thing I do love about this setup is that now we've got this front motor skid plate kind of coming up there protecting that motor. Before we had a scale engine style skid plate that was molded and that was actually our receiver box, but now we've replaced it with this carbon fiber piece and that Rock 412 HD is sitting just above it. Can't wait to get this thing powered up and drive it. It is going to be an animal. After I made all those modifications with spacing the trailing arms a little bit different at the axle and getting my upper links all sorted, one other thing I did is I did take those ProLine ProSpec shocks and move them to the middle hole on the Vanquish trailing arms. That got me laid down a little bit more. My ride height just super low now still. In the end, I'll take and grab a bone stock new in box bomber and we'll set these two next to each other and you can just see how radical of a difference we have here. I know taking a brand new car and just completely gutting it and doing like what we're doing is not for everybody and I'm not expecting that at all. I'm just taking this opportunity to take a bomber and go all out on it, which I haven't done really before because like on the budget build, I was trying to stay within that schedule. This time, throwing that all out and we're just doing everything we can at once. But I think that major change for this week is going to do it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Again, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.